good, everybody? Whether your natural hair is curly, straight, coily, wavy, fine, thin, damaged from within, this video is for all that wish to achieve hair that is sleek and on sleek. Throughout this video, I will be sharing with you my top pro tips and tricks in order to properly press your hair at home without any damage. And as a professional licensed hairstylist and textured hair specialist, I will be giving modifications for all different textures in this video so that you don't make these key damage-causing mistakes. Don't do it! Let's just get right to it, shall we? Without further ado, I am your main girl Mel, thrilled to partner with Dyson for this video to share with you the groundbreaking Dyson Corel hair straightener because specifically the Dyson Corel features advanced technology like copper flexing plates as well as intelligent heat control, which are just some of the few features that will help me to achieve the smoothest possible straightening with minimal damage. Let's get to it. Bye bye girls. Now before we begin, let's take a look at our hair from within. We need to figure out whether your hair texture is fine and thin or if it is more thick and coarse to determine what kind of products we're going to use, what kind of tension we're going to use, as well as, of course, what heat setting we're going to use. And just to clarify, when I'm talking about texture, I'm not talking about your curl pattern. I'm talking about whether your strands are thin and fine or thick and coarse, unlike mine. You also want to think about if your hair has been color treated, lightened, bleached, or if your hair is thick and frizzy. Right here, I will put the benchmarks for if you have more fine hair. Do feel free to screenshot these. Or if you have more coarse hair, and whichever one you feel like you identify with more, keep that in mind. Throughout this video, I'll be sharing the modifications for your individual texture. As for me and my hair, it is fine to medium. It is porous, color treated, damaged, and clearly, curly. Now this information specifically is very important to help you decide what products to use but also what heat to use. Different textures require different heat settings. So the first thing we're going to do is please throw away any heat tools that do not have these modifications. No shade but also full shade if your flat iron looks like this, busted, dusted, encrusted, um, and there's only an on off button Nothing else? Throw the whole thing away. Throw it away. You Use it as a back scratcher. Shove it up the ass cracker and get rid of it. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Besides something like this looking like it could literally catch on fire any minute, the reason why you want to use a hot tool with multiple different heat settings is because if you are more on the fine side, you don't need to use a super high setting. This is going to be abuse to your hair. One of the best things that I love about the Dyson Corel are the three different heat settings that you can choose depending on your hair type so that you can achieve optimal results. This way I can change the setting to lower or higher depending on what I need and what style I'm trying to achieve so that my hair isn't fried. And the number one thing to know when you are flat ironing and heat styling your hair is the less heat the better, as in the less times you apply heat to your hair repeatedly, the better your results are going to be and your hair will thank me, it will. And let me tell you the tea, if you feel like you can't get your hair straight, even with high heat, it's because you're relying on flat iron to get your hair smooth when you haven't done any of the prep work. All textures should reach for both a shampoo and conditioner when going smooth which I am just about ready for. I have already done a oil treatment. I have oil on my scalp and on my ends. And specifically, if you have an oily hair and scalp, I definitely recommend getting a good cleanse, whether that is by using a clarifying shampoo or by using a balancing shampoo twice in a row to make sure that you are super clean because this is gonna make your style last even longer. I personally will be going in with two shampoos and it does help to use products that help with smoothing. And just an FYI, if you are interested in the products that I'm gonna be using throughout this video, I will have them all linked in the description box below. At this point, the biggest mistake that you could make would be to take a break. That is if you want your hair to be smooth and straight. So right away, right after the shower, you wanna get started and you wanna apply your leave-in treatments. All hair types need a leave-in treatment that has heat protection, not only to prevent from heat damage, but it's also going to help to keep your hair smooth and straight. If you have finer strands that are more easily weighed down, use something that's lighter. Or if your hair is more thick and coarse, use something that's a little bit thicker. If you have very dry and color treated hair, you may need something a little bit more conditioning. So you can either look for a spray that is a little bit more creamy 
like you see here. And pro tip, because this is a little bit heavier to avoid it going too heavy right at my roots, I do prefer to spray it on my hands and distribute it that way. And if you have strands that are even thicker and coarser and you find them to be stubborn, unruly, very frizzy, you're gonna be better off with more of a balm type of consistency for your leave-in treatment like so. It's very important to do this on hair that is still wet and fresh from after your shower and not letting your hair wait to air dry because the moment you start to let your hair air dry, you are losing control. Your hair, especially if it is naturally curly, is going to start to dry in its natural state. And we do not want our strands to take that form. And ultimately what makes this step so important is if you let your hair air dry or dry in its natural state, which is wavy, kinky, or coily, it's going to be so much harder for you to get it smooth and straight, which is going to make you put more work and effort in with the flat iron, which is where the damage comes in. And so instead of relying on our flat irons, we begin the smoothing process now with the blow dryer. Be right back to section. Beautiful. Take a look at these sections here. We've got one, two, three, four, five. The more hair you have, the thicker your hair is and the more unruly, the more control you're going to need. And the best way to get control over your hair is to work in more sections. It's time to blow dry. You see how I wore this shirt? Yeah, wear something that's loose fitting. Keep the door open. Make sure there's a cool breeze coming at you so you don't sweat your buns off for this next section. And this part is extremely important. They really, every step of the way really is. But this is gonna help you to prevent needing to use a lot of heat when you are flat ironing. The key is to get your hair as smooth as possible right now. And the biggest mistake you can make here besides air drying would be rough drying without a nozzle and just mindlessly blow drying because that's not gonna help you get your hair smooth. You always wanna use a concentrated nozzle to direct the airflow. And I like to start on the bottom section. Oh, you can see the hair is very wet. And this is how I wanna start this. Now blowing in with the airflow, I'm actually using low heat to show you that you can do this with low heat, which is something I recommend, especially since we're applying even more heat later. So with the blow dryer on a lower heat setting, notice I'm always angling the airflow from the root down to the ends. This is gonna help dry the hair quicker and silkier. And on that note, a brush should always be used, but the right brush depends on your hair's texture. If your hair is on the more fragile and damaged side, blow dry downwards like so a little bit before picking up a brush, just to make sure you're not putting too much tension on the hair. But a brush should always be used. This is a paddle brush, pretty versatile for all hair types, very important to help get the hair nice and smooth, especially if the hair is more wavy curly. For hair types that are more on the curly, coily side that are either fragile or coarse, but definitely very tangly, I recommend using a wide tooth comb attachment on the blow dryer because this is gonna help to be very gentle. The wide teeth are not going to be too aggressive on the curls and it's gonna help to start smoothing the hair out. Coily hair can get very tangled very quickly and it can also be very fragile to using brushes with a lot of tension, at least at the beginning. So sometimes using a wide tooth comb is also a great option. I recommend doing this to get most of the curl out before you go in with a smoother brush with much more tension like a round brush or a boar bristle brush. That way it's not too much tension on your curls which could get tangled and cause breakage. And that's the method I'm using on myself. I'm first using the wide tooth comb and then I'm picking up my round brush just to finish smoothing it. What's really key to remember is that the curlier your hair, the quicker you're gonna wanna pick up that smoothing brush in order to really get all of those kinks and coils out. Again, from wet to dry so we can really set that hair in place and so that it can stay straight. There's two things that can break the hydrogen bond that make the hair form its shape, whatever style that you do that day. And those two things are temperature and moisture. The reason why our hair can look straight when we're using heat is because it is setting those hydrogen bonds to be smooth. And it holds that way, especially after the hair cools. But when we are smoothing the hair like this with the blow dryer from wet to dry, that tension that we are using with our brush in the blow dryer is going to help to set our strands in that style solely because it is drying smoothed out. You can obviously use heat when you're blow drying. This will speed up time. But if you're really looking to minimize the damage on your hair, then you want to minimize the amount of heat exposure is going on to it. As you've been watching me, I hope you can see how I'm going really from roots to ends. You wanna blow dry the moisture from your scalp 
to the ends and off of your hair and really get in there. I want to make sure they get the closest to my scalp as possible and also all the way at the back of my head. The last thing I want to see is a little bump swiggly. It's just not for me. And if you can't do this to yourself, do call a friend. See, Stair? See, Stair? Sister wasn't there to blow dry my hair. She simply doesn't care. Notice that I'm clipping some of this hair away so that it doesn't get in my way. I don't lose control. Remember, we want to stay in control of the strands to get them as smooth as possible, which I can't wait to show you. Let me just finish this up and then we'll straighten things out. Great! When you think that your hair is all dry, think again. I don't care what you're using. You cannot flat iron damp hair. I'm just gonna say that one more time louder for the people in the steam pod back. Do not flat iron hair when it is wet. Damp, moist, absolutely not. That is one of the most damaging things you can do and the biggest mistakes that people make. Feel your hair for any cold spots. Now, I feel one right under here. If this hair feels cold, it's still damp. So make sure that your hair is completely, completely dry before, once you're all blow dried, it's time to turn on your machine. Now, the Dyson Corral only takes about 30 seconds or less to heat up to your desired temperature. Let me show you how that works. I just undid the latch that keeps it locked, pressed the button on, and now I can adjust my heat by pressing the plus or minus button. And we're gonna start low, low and slow. There, there she is, under 20 seconds. And now while it's hot, let me show you what the lowest heat setting of this flat iron can do up close. Because look, if you have the options to switch up the heat settings, always start low. Even if you have thick and coarse hair, if you can avoid using the highest temperature of heat, then do that. You could always turn up the temperature, but you can't turn down the damage once it's been done. So take a look at this, starting on the lowest heat setting, I'm going to take just this front section of my hair here. Now look what happens when I don't apply any tension to the strand, I just run it through with one smooth, consistent, slow pass of the corral to my ends. Nobody move, nobody move. Look at the plates of the flat iron. These are manganese copper alloy plates. They actually flex around your strands and this helps to control them, gather the hair neatly to the center, which means I don't even have to use two hands to hold the ends with a brush or even just my fingers, pulling the strand straight. That, my friends, is one pass. One pass. The one pass is the key to no heat damage. And as you can see from doing my front pieces here, right in front of you, loud and clear, that one smooth, consistent pass through my hair allowed me to achieve the sleekest strands with both minimal effort and heat. Again, this is the lowest temperature setting there is. Now we're gonna go through my whole head with just one pass. So I'm gonna section my hair yet again for the most control. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put this on my charging station so that it can charge up in between my uses and I can continue to use this cord free. However, if I did need the cord, look at this. She's plugged in almost three feet behind you and I can plug the cord in right here, which swivels and back it up all the way back here. All the way back here. Hair, she's super long and flexible. These hairs are driving me crazy. Okay, time to section. And look, if at this point you're just looking for the quickest option, let me show you what I do. I just take diagonal sections off of my parting and work back on a diagonal. But just before that, if you are extra like me and your hair is very dry, big and poofy, I do like to take a very light oil, especially one that also has added heat protection and hair repairing in it, really light oil, and work this through my hair as well. And I like to keep a fine tooth comb handy just to help me with my sectionings and also if I do want to follow through. Typically with any other flat iron, I would have to definitely follow through with the comb, but you see the results of the corral. I don't necessarily have to do that, which is even easier 
but it's kind of just a force of habit and it's not a bad thing to do either. In fact, it's a big mistake that a lot of people make just by going through with the flat iron on hair that isn't even properly detangled and therefore it's just flat ironing over kinks and tangles um, and that's a, just a big no-no. No, 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 no. You can see how charged it is. It's not quite full, but I am gonna kind of challenge myself right now to get through my whole head on the lowest temperature, yet again, uh, without putting this back on the charging cord every five seconds because I'm a little too lazy for that. So my section is not too thick. I can still kind of see through it. If your section sizes are really thick, you're gonna have to go over your hair multiple times, which again, that's gonna cause the damage for you. So take a fine enough section, get your other hairs out of the way, and let us begin. Comb through. I love how I can get right up to the root. It's actually touching my ear, the corral, but this isn't hot at all. You can see where the hair is as well, going through the flat iron. I try to keep the hair, the section of hair, in the middle of the plate. So right in the middle section, that way the whole plate can bend around my hair again and control it so that I can go over it with just one pass. Can you look at that? I love how there's still volume. It's not flat. Your hair looks really flat and almost greasy after passing through with the section. That is a tell-all sign that your heat is way, way too high. Reminder, I'm still here. If the machine is not in use, it will start to cool off as an automatic response to turn off. I'm not making this up. 165 degrees Celsius. No other flat iron could ever. I really find that working in vertical sections helps me get closer to the root, especially in the back, because I just turn my head and it makes it much easier to reach back here. Now, because I'm working front to back, one section at a time, this really helps me to keep in control and also not go over these sections twice in a row because I know what I've done. And again, we want to center the section in the middle of the plate. Who is she? Sorry, I just got distracted by my beauty. I'm already looking so different. And I usually don't straighten like this. This is the home stretch. A quick little pro tip for you. If you have little curlies in the corner here, like me, the best way to get them is to kind of grab them. I twist them so that I can get it a little more off of the scalp there, and then get right in there. See that? Snatch it, and then flat it. She's naturally silky. It's weird to see me like this. Is it weird for you to see me like this? The color could be cuter. Oh, how I can't wait to do her. But hey, on that note, one of the biggest mistakes that people make, people with colored hair especially, that is, is that they use hot tools the day of your color. You're just asking for it to fade. You are. I mean, if you hate the color, then do that. But if you don't hate your hair, then don't. Um, especially if you have gone lighter, I would never in a million years recommend to anyone with curly hair that has just had a highlighting service, for example, to get their hair straightened the same day. Save it for another day. I'm just gonna finish this up, and by the way, still, still pretty good battery. Mm-hmm. It's time for the finishing touches. Okay, she's looking fancy. Now don't make the mistake of not finishing your hair and locking in this style. If you're particularly very prone to getting flyaways, you can help tame those flyaways with a lightweight oil. This one comes in a spray. And don't be shy to use a little bit of hairspray as well. This one's for hold and volume. I mean, I don't need much of the volume, but I do need all of the hold. Pro tip, spray your fingertips to brush it through. Just like this. Wow, look at me. I'm not Mel anymore. I'm, I'm, what's my straight hair alter ego name? I'm open to suggestions. Leave them in the comment section below. Now I am just about to end this video off here, but I'm sure any Dominicans out there watching this are like, that's it. <laughs> Finally, one of the biggest last mistakes you can make that ruin your hair so that they can't last a full week is by not wrapping it. And if you don't know what a tubi is, I will link a tutorial from a Dominican beauty in the description box below. So you can follow that tutorial and make this style last and make it all worth your while. Because remember what I told you, the less times you can apply heat to your hair, 
the better and healthier it will be. And if you follow the tips and tricks that I've shared with you in this video, you really won't need to. That being said, huge shout out to my hot tool, the Dyson Corral. You have been the star of the show here. This is definitely a luxury beauty item, but if you want the most and the best out of your straightening and your styling and your healthy hair, this is the tool to get. And I mean, look at that color. I will link all the details for you to look more into the Dyson Corral in the description box below. Definitely check it out. I highly recommend for all textures yet again. So thank you Dyson again for sponsoring me on this video. I'm such a proud Dyson ambassador. I'm absolutely obsessed with each and every one of their hot tools and I can't wait to see what they come out with next. But until the next tutorial, this has been your main girl Mel. I would love it if you subscribe to me so I can see you in the next video. Peace. And we're rolling. Hey, bada bada hey, bada bada swing. I got to just do my thing. Hey, bada bada hey, bada bada swing. Hey, hey. May the fourth be with you. Yes. This is, it's May the fourth. It's May the fourth when this video goes live. Live long and prosper. But truthfully, I don't know if this is Star Trek or Star Wars. Luke, Lucas would be very, very disappointed in me right now. You know, he wants to make me watch Star Wars from start to finish. I told him only after we watch Twilight. Yeah! Team Edward, everybody. Team Edward for life! Robert Pattinson, if you are seeing this, how did you get your hair so great? I have recently joined a uh, TikTok fan club. She talks about all, all things Twilight and uh, I'm gonna drop the at in the comments because if you're a Twilight fan as well, you should just follow her. It's just, I feel like I found my people. I found my people! The sun just came out. Oh, it's a package coming! Should I go get it? No. Busted, dusted, crusted, back to scratch. Where were you when I called you? And if you can't do this to yourself, do call a friend. See, Stare? See, Stare? The little sister wasn't there to blow a drama. You simply don't care. See, Stare, I love your hair. I washed it. Great, goodbye. That, that's where my clip was. But I'm having a hot flash. I won't open the window, but the birds won't shut up. Excuse me, nature, please. Thank you. That is all. We're gonna die. Camera's gonna die. Okay, bye.